a lot now, a lot. Like I said, I've been here five years now, hopefully going into my sixth season. So I grew up around the area. I used to climb in over the fence to get in for nothing and save me two good pocket money for a pound of pop. But no, like I said, I grew up around the area. I've watched the club as a youngster go, like sort of come up through and now obviously to be involved in what we're involved in, it's, yeah, it's magic to be fair. After returning from County Durham on late Sunday evening, the squad wouldn't be in Plymouth for long, as only 24 hours later, they would make the 164 mile trip to Hampshire to face title chasing Winchester City. Yeah, that, that game that game stands out, especially because we've just gone to Spenny Moor up in Newcastle on, the, on a Saturday and got back late Sunday and then to go to Winchester on a Tuesday, another long journey. Um, myself personally, I think I played centre back that game as well. And you think I've just gone playing Spennymoor, worked my socks off as a winger, and now I'm back to playing centre back against Winchester. And you think, oh God, and, you know, just a, a horrible game to want to be involved in, kind of thing on a cold Tuesday night. And then um, that Winchester game, oh, eventful to say the least. Second ball! <laughs> You don't want that. You don't want it. No, get them away from the ref. Lady, make sure we're secure, Lady. Well done, Billy. Stick one. 
Oh. Bang it. Oh. It's coming. It's coming. The weirdest game of Ireland football that was, that was like, how can you score, give a penalty away, <sighs> miss a penalty? I think it might have even got an assist that game, but yeah, that was that was just the weirdest day I've ever had in football. Everything just happened <laughs> around me, really. Like, it's weird. <laughs> yeah, I can't even explain it. That that was a tough, weird day. This was this is the mentality that I'm talking about. He doesn't let that you know get on top of him. The fact that he's already missed one, he he's like, no, I'll do this. I'll do this. This is me. I've got this. And he steps up and he puts it in. And we get a point, we rescue a point when we were 3-2 down, going into the 90th minute, conceded a penalty. We played the best part of 17 minutes with 10 men. Would have been easy to crumble at that point. But again, another example of the mentality of this football team. From Hampshire, on to Bristol. Parkway would be on their travels again four days later to face mid-table Poulton Rovers, with the Plymouth club racking up over 1,300 miles on the coach in seven days. It was Reese that got dragged down by their manager, I think it was. And I was, I was like, obviously, what are you doing? So I've gone and shoved him, and then all, everything obviously started. I mean, I didn't want it to go to that level, but once you're in it, you're in it. You've got to keep going. And um, no, I, I kind of got brought out of it. And I think it, I think it was Goddard that was in there in the end, like going for it. But you know, it is what it is, and it happened, and everyone settled down afterwards. I tried to, I tried to stay away from it. Really, I'm, just, I'm not the biggest guy in the world, but. Um, no, you just try and break it up as quick as possible, really, and like you know, it's it's not scenes you want to see in football, but it it does happen. It does happen. It's been a brilliant week, an outstanding fucking week, if I'm being honest. Four points from two away games against two teams, two teams who are above you in the fucking table. 
Massive. Absolutely fucking massive. Anything to add? Nine points, Tiger. Fucking game. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. A fracas at the end of the game, but three points to end a long week on the road as Parkway eventually headed home. The schedule ahead looked gruelling after Parkway's exploits in the FA Trophy, and two days on from the win at Poulton, they returned to Belitho to face 15th place Slimbridge. <laughs> Six of the best for the second time of the season for Parkway. But people left Belitho again, talking about a Billy Palfrey wonder strike. I put it down on the cameraman really, it was just a good strike. And then but yeah. No, it was it was it was, uh, it was another good goal from Bills, but it's one of those where you stood right behind it and as soon as he hit it, you knew it was going to top corner. Um, and just to show shows you how good it was, it's, it's Finn's reaction that makes me laugh, head on hands. Um, oh, hands in the head if you like, and it's like, oh my God, what's, what's he done? And yeah, it was just brilliant. It was one of those where if he didn't hit it, you're like, yeah, it was like a good decision. But when you see him lining it up, he's like, he's actually going to hit it. And I had the perfect view behind it and I just saw it going straight to the top corner. I, I couldn't believe that I actually went in and yeah, I didn't know what to do with myself. I just put my hands in the head and just kind of ran. <laughs> it's just, he's just hit it so sweetly and, it, and it's literally just arrowed straight into the top corner. But I, I think personally that's his best goal, personally. I know he scored from the halfway line, and, but to hit that first time with that technique, for me, that's, I think that's the best goal. Parkway would end January in eighth place. 17 points off table top of Sirencester, but with five games in hand. Every game would be critical from here on in if the club wanted to mount a serious playoff challenge. They would stay in Plymouth for their next fixture as they welcome Bristol Manor Farm to Belitho Park. Last time out at Manor Farm, we got done by two corners, okay? Done by two corners. Through us, 
not being aggressive enough, not fucking zonal enough in terms of that. Italian defending, if you like, box off your mind. I'm stronger than you. Fuck off. Okay? That's the way it's got to be. Because for them, and, and, and not only just for them and for others, we're conceding far too fucking many corner kicks, free kicks, and we're making our bark of it for ourselves. So you've got to be braver. You've got to mark fucking better. We've got to fucking be prepared to, to, to be stronger, more aggressive, and just have a desire to want to win that fucking duel. Right? Got to do it. Because they'll, they'll think he's vulnerable. Goes in a put them in a run, like Winchester away, they'll put them under that bar, and they're going to ask questions. So you got to be tougher, and your men, you got to be fucking tougher, okay? They would lose their proud home unbeaten record as Manor Farm produced a fine away display with 10 men to complete the double over the yellows. But the biggest talking point would be the vulnerability from corners that would again prove costly. It was tough, it was a hard time and you seemed to, ever, in whichever way we set up, just wasn't working. There was always a free man or someone would always get beat or get run off. It was, or they would get the second ball or something like that and just, we just couldn't find a right for it. The management team probably as well didn't help things when they're shouting and screaming at the time. Um, but it's one of them where, like I say, it's that mentality. Once we've conceded a couple in our heads, we're thinking we're vulnerable here. Obviously, when it, when it does go out and you've conceded you know, numerous goals from corners, you kind of think, oh, maybe it is psychological that fucking hell, we better do well here. You know, we better really make sure this one doesn't go in because we can't have another one. Something needed to change the way we were dealing with them and fair play to the management team for sitting down watching the footage understanding what was going wrong if you like how we could improve and um, I think we were better for it eventually. 
eventually. Defeat against Manor Farm would dent Parkway's playoff hopes, and they needed to bounce back as they travelled to Highworth Town. They had already tasted victory at the Save On Tire Stadium. Could they do it again? Parkway would hand a debut to loan signing Gabby Rogers from Torquay United. But it would be forgotten man Harrison Davis who had hit a dramatic 90-second minute winner. It's always part of the squad, always part of the team, and, and that's, that's what this club is. It is every, generally everybody together. And for Harrison to stick around, do what he does, scored some massive goals for us. Um, brilliant, brilliant player, brilliant lad to have around. As the club moved into February, the rain was continued to sweep over the city. The Truro City ground share was beginning to take its toll on the pitch as Melksham Town headed to Plymouth. Parkway takes over our whole day, yeah. Tuesdays or yeah. Saturdays, isn't it? Yeah. That is it. Checking at fixtures and that, see who we got next. Checking weather. Yeah. So if there's a slight bit of rain on this yeah, new pitch, it, yeah. shit, we're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's that it. is how we see it. Yeah. So it ruins the whole, if it's not on, we're like that. Oh, yeah. no. But sometimes, well, we walk the dogs there every night. So uh, we take the dogs up there, we check the ball for them, and we're checking the pitch all the time. And like, Gaz has done an amazing job. And then if it's been raining, it's like, oh, it's looking a bit boggy for yeah. tomorrow. It's like, oh, it might be off. We're up there every day, and we like, yes. at the pitch. It's like, the hello turf. So it goes back down your house, then yeah. like, after it's like, oh, I don't know. I'm not sure if the game's on tomorrow. Yeah, it's like, no, it's not on. Yeah. Fuck. yeah, we knew it. Yeah. We called it yesterday when we were with the dogs. Yeah. We knew it before the yeah. ref knew it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah! 
tough for, for a team like us because obviously we like to play football and when, when it's like that you're like what can you do the ball's barely bouncing like you said and what do you do you end up just end up clicking channels and trying to get just create something but when it's not barely moving on the pitch like, what are you supposed to do it probably should have been called off to be honest frustrating frustrating obviously for all the money that was spent during the summer um, and then obviously what it was like pre-season it was immaculate, so it was it was frustrating, and no one wants to receive that text on a Saturday morning. Is game off, lads? Fucking training instead. No one wants that text. Everyone wants to play football, and that's it. We want to play matches. But it is what it is. And what we're going to do? We're going to like tools down and just say, "Well, we're not playing for the rest of the season." So we've got to get on with it, and that's the the message that we tried to deliver. Um, if we had any aspirations of getting into the playoffs, which is what the aspiration was at that point then we're going to have to get on with it and, and find, out, find, ways, find a way again of winning football matches here. It, it was always going to be tricky with two teams, especially with the weather. We mustn't forget the weather was horrendous. We had a cut, the trophy was a success, but causing us a problem because to be fair to Truro, they were doing well in it. We were playing here Saturdays, Sundays. It was an issue. It was. But some of the stuff I was reading was farcical and, and laughable. You know, we're, we've put the drainage in upside down. We've put the mat in and upside down. Uh, you know, I just, it was laughable, really. The only time you get to fix a pitch is in the summer. And all the way through that season, we're going, right, we've got work to do in the summer, haven't we? And that's all we can do. You know, we, we've, we've put a lot of money into that pitch last summer. Um, to, to get the drainage put in, to, to be able to do it. We've then gone, right, we're going to double up the amount of teams that are playing here. So that means double the amount of games, double the amount of warm-ups, double the amount of you know, pre-season friendlies. Everything's doubled. So you've got a brand new pitch, new grass, and you're killing it from the day you start the season. Um, so, you know, it, it frustrates me as much as it frustrates the fans when you're not playing football. We all want to be here watching football on a Saturday afternoon. Parkway would leave their pitch problems behind them as they headed to Somerset, but problems would follow them as news would emerge of influential midfielder River Allen being told not to travel due to off-field ongoings. I didn't really know a lot about what's actually gone on. Um, it was one of those things where the club makes behind the scenes, they have decisions behind the scenes, so that's all I've had to say about it really at the, 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 that point in time. Um, obviously Riv's a good friend of mine, i um, played with him a few places now. Um, he's a good lad, off, on and off the pitch, he can be a bit of a moaner as well, but it was one of those things, but 
that's why he was such a good player in, in my eyes. Um, but yeah, what happened off the pitch, I didn't really know a lot at all. Again, you just try not to like let it creep into anyone. You just got to get on with it. It is what it is. It was out of our hands. It was nothing to do with us. It was all down to River, Lizzo and the board. That was it. That was to be all and end all of it. Um, and you've just got to kick on from that. You can't. There's no point as players fucking moping around about it or moaning or do you know what I mean asking questions. We had no part to play in it, it's, it was down to the club and that was it and we just had to get on with it and get another three points. I, I worked extremely hard with Mark to get River Allen at the club and there were, there's been a couple of times where River was very close and we never pushed a deal over the line but to be fair this time we felt what we went all out to get River here. For me, you know, I don't want to fall out with anybody and, and I wish River Allen all the best in what he does. You know, if he, if he comes back here at a later date, he does. If he, if he ends up playing against us here at a later date, he does. I was very disappointed what um, there were noises about River leaving with basically six weeks of the season to go where we had pushed the boat out to bring him here and he was considering leaving. So when Lee made myself and, Lee, uh, myself and Mark aware of what he was thinking of going and then that broke through, and to be honest with you, my mind was made up. Obviously, you know, Chairman, Lee, we, all, we spoke about it. Um, and I think we made the right decision. Um, like I say, if you walked in here now, I'll buy him a pint and whatever. But I was very, very disappointed how it went. I haven't, I haven't seen him speak to him since. Um, but if I do see him, I will speak to him. Um, and wish him all the luck. That's the luck. With one missing, another can take their chance. And returning loney Ethan Mitchell from Argyle would look to grab his opportunity as Parkway would attempt to get back to winning ways against Larkle Athletic. Listen, they fancy it, okay? They've lost five games all year. They're tough not to crack at home. They're the only team that followed us into the forefront of the trophy going out to Stockport. We went out to Spennymore. They had home games, we had home games. So that tells you they're difficult to beat at home. First and foremost, Beat their fucking craft, beat their desire, be fucking more powerful, you got more quality, run all over them, right? Run all over them. It's a big pitch on the ball, make sure they're good. If you set a warm up, you know the pitch is lively. Listen, deal with it. That's this fucking time of year. There's no excuses. Work it out. If you've got to spin corners, spin corners. If we can dribble, fucking dribble. But first and foremost, don't overplay, don't get caught. I don't know their system, we don't know too fucking much about them. If predominantly, no, no doubt, probably a 4 2 3 1, something like that. It's a, just all over when your individual battles, and collectively it will take care of itself. Nothing less than a fucking win, okay? And a point fucking minimum. Can't win it, don't lose it. Listen, when you've got a goalkeeper at home, wasting time, at home, at fucking home, if I'm on that big bank, I'm fucking screaming. I'm screaming. But that's when you know a team's fucking beat. A beat. The school I might say nil nil, but that's when you know a team can't fucking live with you. Get 
Another wonder goal from Billy, but it wouldn't be the main topic of conversation after the game. A scouser Ethan Mitchell would steal the limelight with a man of the match performance in a crucial away win. He's a winner, he's got good character, he's a scouser, um, and he come in in that game against Larkle and hit the ground running. I think he got man of the match that game, obviously he's a centre back by trade, we played him as a four in, in holding midfield. And he was brilliant. He, he edited, he tackled, he got around, he won second balls, he put his foot in, he played on the edge. I think that performance sort of confirmed in our heads that maybe that was the right decision, you know, with whatever had happened, the, the controversy with River. Um, him coming in and just that performance, it just took the limelight away from that situation and made us talk about his performance rather than that. Yeah, that, that is what he can do, you know, you put him in centre mid, he, he will run the show, you trust him on getting on the ball and, you know, he's, he's a really good player, so he did really well that game, showed what he could do and that's why he ended up starting in midfield all the time because, you know, he's just really calm, keeps his head and plays really well most games. The timing could not have been better um, and great lad, great attitude, run through a brick wall and he's huge. You know, for, for his age, he is immense. And his fitness is amazing, his strength is amazing. And we needed that in that midfield. We needed someone who could come in and just give us that extra crunch that we didn't have. And we didn't have before all of the problems because there wasn't that crunch. We've now got it. Parkway would begin March with another away trip to Sholing, who occupied a playoff place. The Yellows sat seventh from the table 17 points off the top, but with five games at hand. Could they get closer to the playoff spots with victory in Hampshire? Free kicks, Billy and Laney, Pence, Bill, you again, okay? Listen, hey, stay together. Come on, boys. Fucking Come on, boys. Play together, lose together. No fucking fear. Be ruthless, go and get the job done. Come on, Get it, get it, join it! 
Can we keep a clean sheet? Can we get a point? If we get a point, I'll be happy. If we get three, I'll be in dreamland. If you don't get three here today, then what I'm seeing there, and that's someone who's challenging you for a fucking title or a playoff spot, then we don't deserve to get into that top fucking five when we finally get in there. Because you've got to put this to the sword. I'm not having it. Similar to the high ref game, it was one of them where nil nil at the time. Lee gives us gives us a shout and says, "Look, go win us the game. Um, it's there for you." Again, a, a sense of relief. It was almost come on, and given given the fans something that I'd hoped I could give them more of, if I'm if I'm honest. Um, and it, for whatever reason, didn't quite happen too often. Um, but yeah, it was more more a sense of relief, and um, I was just glad that I could contribute and get the three points. Ethan would take part in his initiation song after picking up three points on the road, but the club had been busy behind the scenes as they looked to the future and handed contracts to Ryan Lane, Billy Palfrey, and Mikey Williams. There was a football club not too far away who were doing some business which is bigger than we could ever do. Um, and that's their prerogative. If you got it, spend it. Um, but I rang the board and said, Look, I'm going to travel with you, you two, in the car on the way up to Larco. We need to have a chat about certain individuals and we need to put a plan together and we need to get certain individuals tied down as quickly as we can to make sure that they're here for the next two years at least. And credit to the football club, the chairman, the vice chairman, the board, they backed it. They backed it, they had them in. The next day, I think it was, or over the next two days, and they were signed, sealed and delivered. Their deals were done, and they're now at this football club, I think now, to 2024. I've been here five years. I can't see why I would want to go anywhere else, you know, the place is, developing the way it is, you know, it's growing. Um, fans, most of them seem to like me anyway. Um, and yeah, I just get on well with the place and it's just, it's just, yeah, like I said, like you said at the start, a family, a home, um, and just somewhere like I can't see, unless United come in for me, which I can't see. Um, I can't see myself going. Yeah, like I said, I think I said at the time, there's, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. Um, the club's progressing. It's a great, it's a great club to be at. It's on my doorstep. I mean, if you weigh up all the pros and cons, it's a bit of a no-brainer, really, to be honest. Especially with how much is going on. You see that all the building work that's gone on at Belivo. You see how we've been getting on in the FA Trophy. You know the, the performances we've been putting in. And teammates. It's just a 
great club to be a part of. When obviously I uh, got the phone call or the message, yeah, I was like, there's no place I really want to be rather than here. I've loved it since I come here, I don't want to go anywhere else. It's, it's a big part of my life to be honest, especially at the moment. It was sort of a no-brainer to be honest. I'm happy here and I don't want to be anywhere else. After picking up six points from two away games, Parker would have returned to Plymouth looking to make Belifo Park a fortress once again, after dropping four points from their last two home games. They would look to put this right against bottom side Barnstable Town, whose recent performances were much improved after strong investment into the North Devon club. Back at Belifo and another three points in the bag. Yep, brilliant to be back. I was a little bit sceptical, obviously looking at Truro and seeing how they've been scraping results and haven't been able to play the expansive brand that they want to play. But listen, I think the little bit of dry weather has helped us massively. Um, the pitch was arguably no different to what it's been over the years at this time of year and um, we played it well today. Um, listen, that's not to say we're going to play well every time. But today was a really, really good night, a good night's work. But no, listen, for us, another one chopped off. Really, really pleased. Good energy in us. We were fluid in terms of pressing and quality at the top end. It was a good night, it was a good night. It was a good night. Back in November, Parkway were 19 points off the top of the table. But after three points against Barnstable, they would stay in Devon and head to Biddeford with the knowledge that winning their remaining games would see them top the table. And tonight is so important for us because of what's happened at the weekend, okay? The results have been favorable for us again, all right, again. So even though we didn't play, this would be our game that we're gonna make up. We have to capitalize just like we did the week before. We've done that on Tuesday night against um, Barnstable. 
gained a place. We need to do it again tonight to get closer to that fucking pack again. Okay? It's, it's, it's a huge game for us. It really, really is. And now we've got to look at keeping our focus, keeping our consistency, gathering momentum, and blowing fucking Biddeford away. Okay? These are tough nights here. Arguably, we've come up here on a better night. Clocks have turned. Sun's not going down to 7 o'clock. Weather's half tardy. Just walk the pitch. It's fine. Yeah, so, so for me, this is the game tonight where if we're at it and we don't take our fucking eye off the prize, which is ultimately now winning this league, then we should have a good night. <laughs> fourth league win in a row, thanks to a winner from Adam Carter, who is playing an important role off the pitch as well as on it. He's so experienced, isn't he? So, you know, he talks to me a lot. When, it, when I was playing as a striker, he would come up and have conversations with me, with me, even though he wants to play in that position. He just wants the team to win, and you can see that on and off the pitch. He always gets, like, he's one of them where he does get a bit of bad press just because the way he is kind of thing. Some fans are like, oh, he's not working hard enough, he doesn't contribute, things like that. But as a player and a teammate, knowing what he does on the pitch is, is beneficial to the team and, and he does get a bit, a bit of bad press and goes a bit unnoticed. So really pleased for him to, to score on the day and, and get the winner. This was always going to be a tricky fixture. I fucking told you and I knew it. So when I'm watching you laboured over there and you're not really doing what you should be doing because you ain't got three, four hundred people around the ground at home, that's what costs you. Please believe me, that's what fucking costs you. But you've picked it up, you took the information that we've given you before the game, what we've given you at half-time, substitutions, we found a fucking winner. It was so important today, right, that we capitalised and I said it to you. Draw one no good to us. If it was good for the league, it wasn't <laughs> fucking good to us. And guess what we've done? 
We found fucking free. And guess what we're going to do now? <laughs> Once again, we showed what we were all about. We had to dig in, we, and we did at times. We had a, it was a very difficult game. You know, they, they didn't make it easy for us at all. We came out on top. You know, I started to think this is it. You know, we're 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 knocking off Lorcals away. We're beating Biddeford away. You know, this is what this is what champions do. So I, I thought, well, you know, we're we're on the fringe here. We're on the fringe. <laughs> with confidence high after four wins on the spin, Parkway headed home with another big game on the horizon. Winchester City came to Belitho with their own aspirations of winning the league as Plymouth prepared for another showdown. We just knew going into that game that we had to get one back, you know. We never want to, we always want to take points from every team we play, um, and especially the run we were on, full of confidence, and yeah, we were, they were, they were a tough team, they're, they are a tough team, they're, they're a good, great team, and really hard to beat, but um, very happy to get the win over them. When Mike got bundled over, it was, it was a clear pen, and you celebrate that penalty, it's like it's a goal, but then you quickly come down thinking, Christ, we've got to, we've got to score now. But yeah, you, you, you celebrate the pen, have a minute, and then you just think about the lads stepping up to take it, and then you go again and celebrate. But yeah, massive, massive win that. And then something special about winning the game late on in dramatic fashion. It was, a, it was a, again, the, the, they, they employed the dark arts. You look up, they're digging up the penalty spot, they're trying to grab hold of the ball, they're trying to delay um, you know, us from taking the penalty. They're doing everything within their power to try and rescue you know, a point, which is what it would have been at that stage if we'd missed. We're going into, what, the 89th, 90th minute. And Billy Palfrey steps up again, as he did many times, puts his pre-shot routine in place that he's worked on and Cooley slots a penalty home for the three points. Euphoria. Five wins in a row, 10 games remaining. 19 points behind in November and now in a playoff place. What was going to happen next in this enthralling season? <laughs>